So this fourth part of the third unit of files, I'm going to talk a little bit about ways in which you can keep track of where you are within the files, your reading and writing. Uh, and sometimes it's necessary for you to know whether you're, where exactly within the file you are. Um, particularly this is the case if you're reading and writing from the file at the same time, because you might be um, reading from the beginning of the file, but writing on to the end of the file. Um, so this is where you've opened the file with an R plus or W plus or A plus mode, meaning you're doing both read and write on the same file. So when Python's working with a file, it maintains an idea of where it is within the file. It maintains basically a bookmark that says I'm here in the file. So whenever you try reading to the file, it says, okay, go to the bookmark, read however much it needs to read, move the bookmark along and give the user back the data. And likewise, when you're writing, I mean, you tend to just write at the end of the file, but it will it'll go to the bookmark, it'll write the data, it'll move the bookmark to the end of the data, and then say, okay, this is where we're gonna, gonna go on from. And uh, dot tell and dot seek are two methods that work on the file variable. Tell will tell you where you are, so where that bookmarker actually is. And seek will move the bookmarker to where you ask it to move it to within the file. So seek lets you not just read from the end of the file or the beginning of the file, it lets you decide where you're going to read from or write to. And tell keeps track of where you are. Now, the only gotcha with this, um, which is quite a big gotcha, it has to be said, is that as soon as you try iterating a file, that is using it in a for loop or using it with a next, it becomes impossible to use the bookmark any longer. Essentially what's happening is that when you're iterating the file, Python says, okay, I'm having that bookmarker and I'm looking after it and you can't mess with it now because you'll get me confused. Um, so as soon as you start doing anything like that, your, your bookmarker becomes unavailable and dot tell and dot seek won't work and they'll just throw error messages. So that gives you a bit of a constraint and you have to just adjust to slightly how you go about using it. So um, you can, for example, go and use tell to keep track of where you are by doing something that looks a bit like this. So um, I'm going to create a list uh, which is going to store my lines for me. Um, uh, and in fact, I'm not just going to store the, the lines there, I'm also going to store the position of the start of each line as I go through. So I'm going to open the file. And now you say I've got this while true loop. Now, while true is the while loop is going to go whilst whatever it, it's waiting for is true, and true is always going to be true. So that loop is going to run forever. Um, so if I don't have any way of breaking out of it, then my Python program is just going to go and run forever and get stuck there, um, or possibly get stuck until it runs out of um, memory or stuck until some other error happens. So you want to be a bit careful with while true loops. It's um, generally only use it when you know what you're doing, that what you're going to do is going to need to go and do that. Anyway, so we do know what we're doing with this, so we will use a while true. And the first thing we go and do on line four is we ask the file, well, where are you? So we use mydata.tell, and that's going to return a number, which is the number of characters into the file that we're at at this particular point. We then um, use the read line method, which is just going to read the next read from the current position up to the end of the, the line, uh, including the line, end of line markers. So um, that will get into the variable line, whatever the next line is. Now, if we've reached the end of the file, then read line is going to just return an empty string because there's nothing else left to read. So in that case, that line variable will just be empty. And so we test for that in line six and say, OK, if line variable is now empty, that means we were at the end of the file, in which case we can break out of that infinite while loop um, to avoid us getting stuck. If we get onto line eight, that means that line wasn't empty, in which case I'm just going to append to that list lines um, a tuple, so two values, the position and also the actual line I've just read with his end of line markers stripped off as well. And at the end of that, I'm just going to print out all the, the print out the lines. I'm only going to print out the first 10 lines because this file I'm working with has got quite a lot of lines and it's not very interesting. But you can see here are the first 10 lines. And what you've got in each element in that list is you've got the position at the start of the line and then the text of the line. Um, now, if you look at this, you'll see that header and square brackets is only eight characters long. And yet when we look at the next line, it says it started at character 10. 
And that's because there was a return, uh, carriage return, a new line that we stripped off um, that, that was the thing that, that makes the difference between the, the text we've got and the position we get to. So the position, the numbers in these, in these elements, these lists are the position at the start of the line. Okay, so what can we do with that? Um, so um, what we can go and do with that is we can use it to get back to a particular position in the line. So as a kind of simple example here, what we're going to do is I'm simply going to go and get the starting position and for what is worth the line of the sixth line we had in that data file. So I'm indexing lines with five, remembering that indexing starts at zero. So lines five is in fact the sixth line. Um, so you can count along there and go, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll be starting at position 58. And what we'd hope to be then reading is row, time, and signal. So I open the data file. Um, now when I do that, it's going to put the bookmark at the start of the file for me. So then I do my data.seq and I tell it to move to position 58. Um, and then having done that, I'm then going to read one line out of the file and print it out. And you see, indeed, it does read the expected line. So what we've done is we've jumped straight on to the sixth line of the data file um, by telling it where to go and, and seek to. Um, but we did have to tell it where to seek in terms of the number of characters in the file. Uh, unfortunately, it can't retain an idea of uh, where we are in terms of number of lines. Um, if you need to do that, there is indeed actually a module in the Python standard library called line cache, but that's beyond the scope of this course. Okay, so um, the other thing you can go and do uh, with seek is in fact, it takes another parameter. It's the second parameter that's optional that controls where you're seeking to relative or, or so the, where the number you give it to seek to is relative to. So the default value of that second optional parameter is zero. And that means we're doing everything relative to the start of the file. So in the case we just had, I was going to position 58 from the start of the file. Um, if I set that second parameter to be one, then it means relative to where we currently are. So for example, seek five comma one is going to move me forward five space, five characters from wherever I happen to be in the file. Um, if I try seeking past the end of the file, I'm going to have an error. Um, so you don't want to do that. And if that final parameter is two, then you actually do it from the end of the file, in which case you're going to be seeking backwards. Um, so one of the fun things with this, just to give you an idea of what we can do with it, is that although you can't get the length of an open file with the len, so trying to do len on my data is going to just return an error, I can write a function which I can use to get the length of an open file. Um, and it looks like this. So I've created my function. I should have given it a doc string. I haven't given, bothered with a doc string. It's going to take uh, an open uh, file. Uh, so in other words, something's been opened with, with open file name comma read as whatever. I'm going to call it data file inside this function. And the first thing I go and do is I get the current position, the current bookmark position within the file. So I use data file dot tell. Uh, I'm going to want that because I want to go be able to get back there at the end of this. And then I tell data file to go and seek to 0, 2. In other words, to seek to the end of the file, zero characters from the end of the file. Uh, and then I say, OK, now tell me what position you are. And tell is always going to tell me relative to the start of the file. So length, in this case, ends up being something which is the number of characters that is in the file. And then finally, I just need to make sure I move the bookmark back to where it was so that after the function has happened, no one's going to wonder why the bookmarks moved in the file. Um, and so I just do another seek relative to the start, feeding it the current position that I had recorded when I went into this function, and then return the length. And so you can see, I then go and do this with the, the same file. I open it. I call my function with that open file, and it tells me that it's uh, 4,313 characters long. So in that case, that's a simple way of just using the additional seek parameter uh, to do something useful. 